guys, so welcome back to Car and Soul Kids. Um, I hope you're having a great day today. I'm having a hot day today. We're reaching the common now. 30 degrees in my kitchen. Celsius, that is. So, it's a bit um, sweaty today, but that doesn't stop me from reporting orchids. So, today we're going to deal with, or shall we say, sort out my uh, latest curl in order and if you end up liking this video please give it a thumbs up share comment and subscribe all right now get on to it we've got a lot of work to do here so here's the orchids in question that's going to be dealt with today and after an orchid haul i always oh almost always make a uh, follow-up video that's called report or not report i mean it's not always necessary to rip off the orchids that you get. Even though it's uh, it feels good to know what's in a pot. But as for this kind of orchid, Angrecum magdalenae, yeah. <laughs> I know that this one is really, really difficult to get hold of. It's nowhere to be found on the internet except for a curler's web shop. So, this one, I, well, um, <laughs> I'm a little bit scared to uh, fuss around with it too much. So, it's going to stay in this media, since it's bark at least, and uh, perlite. And I do not think it's that much sphagnum moss in there, so it will be okay. I wouldn't want to lose this one. So, let's just, uh, yeah, leave it be. And, my last, um... Or shall we say, first and last, uh, curl in order. I ordered this one, this beautiful Comessa Le Colong Island from, uh, yeah, curling. <laughs> and as you can see, I put it up in a net basket with a medium-sized bark with perlite. And put it into an outside container, dark container. Yeah, and into a, of course, decorative container. And it seems to be doing great as it's blooming. So, and all this massive root growth. So I, I wouldn't want to change a winning concept. So this time, I also ordered a an oncidium type orchid. I think it was a gomesa. Yeah, yeah, another gomesa, flexuosa, the one with the uh, tongue slippering name or tongue bending name, flexuo. Yeah. All right. I hope it's flexible enough, since. Its roots are going to go down, so I have to spray the roots to make them more flexible. <laughs> That's funny. Yeah, um, spray them here. And they turn green immediately. That's nice. Good sign. And it, this one reminds me of my Eoncidium popcorn. It's growing habit of growing fans at the base of a leaf down there and just climbing this climbing behavior well i'm not so fond of it but that's the way these guys work so if we're gonna have these guys i will have to deal with it properly in the very best way i can and what is that you may wonder what's the best way of dealing with this guy well <laughs> not much to put in a pot is it so <sighs> all right let's see here these guys are going to manage, anyway, since they're going to put out some new roots. Okay, this guy, well, doesn't really make a difference if it rots off, but I wouldn't want that to happen anyway, but uh, it's not a big of a deal. These guys are the most important parts, I think. So let's bury this one a bit, shall we? Now it's all cleaned up. <laughs> yeah, let's mix some media. Some perlite, the largest pieces. Down you go. This time, I'm going to add a few pieces of rock wool to the mixture to make it uh, a little bit more water retentive to hold the uh, moisture a little bit better. And a couple of pieces of charcoal. Down you go. And some medium sized bark. Some bark to the bottom. Down with the orchid, and I can twist it just as I do when I report uh, phalaenopsis. 
<laughs> Twist it around in circles. Yeah. Do we like what we see? Well, not really. This is a little bit too long. So, just take it off. Now, let's see if we got it. some more space for it. This little stem was a little bit too um, high up. Um, and it's going to be too high up, so that's not a good idea. So, let's do it like this. I think this is going to be okay. And the new growth are here and there. Enough space here. And this one's roots are going to go down there. So I have to spray them a bit. But uh, there's no way I will be able to avoid that. So since it's a climbing orchid. But the main thing is that it gets some humidity around it. At least a bit. The watering is going to do the rest. It's going to distribute the uh, the media better. And I will have to keep on watering him quite frequently to start with. Since the media is really, really dry and not water retentive at all. Yes. So, I think this one is going to be just as vigorous as its cousin. Yeah, at least I hope so. Where's the tag? It's hidden somewhere. It's here. Okay. Taggy. Stick him up. Lovely. Yeah. I think it looks quite uh, alright. Gorgeous blooms, I think. Small size blooms. And uh, in large clusters. If I remember it right. So, now we got the difficult one in front of us. Angrecum erectum. Hmm. I didn't know that it would arrive like this. I thought it would arrive in... Uh... No, I didn't. <laughs> it's from curling, of course, they didn't arrive in pots. Oh, stupid of me. But, I might as well just make the best of it. So, what can I do? I can spray the roots. They turn green immediately. Looks a little bit like my... Um, <laughs> I never remember the name. Um, Ger Germanianum. And you look at it. And there's a little thing down there. Yeah, it's a root tip. But it's better than nothing, I think. And I would like some roots to go down into the pot. Easier said than done, since it only has got four roots down here. <laughs> so now they're flexible enough so I can bend them down and perhaps they will extend. <laughs> At least that's a thought and that's a hope. <laughs> a wish perhaps. Yeah I didn't tell you what I was up to with this guy. I, I'm gonna repot this one into uh, semi-hydroponics. And yeah it sure means that I will have to remove the first leaf here down there. And the second one as well. But never mind, they won't sit there and rot in the pot for me. That's not a good idea. <laughs> That's not my idea. So now, let's see. Yeah. Now, let's just fill it up with some lecker beams. And let's take this leaf off as well. So, yeah, 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 I know what you're thinking, but it's necessary. If I would like to hydrate this one properly. And let's hope for roots to be able to branch as well. Of course. In there, they can branch. I know that, I've seen it before with my ungrecums. So. Now let's hope the stem won't rot off, but if it does, we still got a lot of <laughs> stem left, so <laughs> this will be okay, I think. That is quite difficult to get it roots down there. Yay! <laughs> yeah. 
I cannot call this uh, orchid lovely, but I can surely call it interesting. That's the category it's in. Interesting. Yeah. And I'm going to tie it up to the, uh, the stick, just like I did with my Geminian. To make it stay upright, of course. And now let's see if we can um, if we can um, grow <laughs> somewhere. <laughs> uh, yeah, this is fun. I know, I know it's fun. Um, yeah, and use a clip, perhaps here. Mwah. Preferably a green clip, like this. Maybe not the most beautiful orchid, but I think it looks nicer. Anyway. And Grecum erectum. Yeah, it sure is erect. <laughs> so in front of us, we got the most uh, peculiar one of them all. And if I had known a little bit more about what this orchid was going to look like when I received it, I would never have gotten it. Papillonanti pedaculata. Yeah, it's a difficult name as well. As well as it's a difficult orchid. Difficult orchid, ugly orchid, and difficult name. Three difficulties in one go. The very same orchid, but <laughs> I am stubborn and I will make this work the best way I can. As I saw its lovely blooms, I surely will give this a go. And I did some reading about it before I <laughs> finally noticed that it was a cool grower. But never mind that. I did some reading anyway. And about how to propagate it, I can, or you can, everybody can, cut it where the, um, the new leaves are coming out. Here. Leaf joints. You can cut it here and put it up as a separate piece. And you can cut it uh, perhaps, uh, let's see, la la la, <laughs> I know, uh, perhaps here. Make this a separate part. So I'm going to divide this guy into three pieces today uh, in order to make this plant look a little bit fuller. So now I just have to see where to cut it. Yeah, I think, no, do I? Yeah, of course I do. Here. Here. I've got to have some roots going into the pot. And, uh, yeah, here perhaps then. Yeah, here. Yeah. Point of no return. <laughs> now, let's see. Um, here's, uh, here's some new roots coming out. A little bit dried in. So, well, I wouldn't count on these two guys to perform that well but we still need to get some stuff into the pot so what to do um yeah i'm gonna cut it here as close to it as i possibly can <laughs> it's a little bit scary almost broke this one off but uh, it managed i guess and yeah, we got this one in one piece, the root. So now I can propagate it. And in order to do it, I will have to make the roots a little bit more flexible than they are. But they're quite okay, but can be even better. <laughs> can always be better. And now this part is a little bit too small for it, so I will have to change it to a little bit larger part. And with semi hydroponics, I will have to have a wick as well. So I will just cut the wick for you. So now the wick is in place and um, up against the side. And I found a beautiful little fence here <laughs> sticking out through the bottom. Well, I'm not sure that it's going to be <laughs> suitable, but we can try to use it. Yeah, to tie the uh, <laughs> orchid parts up against it <laughs> with some uh, small clips perhaps 
we shall see. It's not every day I make a recording this, yeah, this kind of recording, so to speak. Yeah. I don't want it to be too wide, but, um, hmm. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Is this really happening? Yeah, it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, but it sure is fun. <laughs> Extreme propagation. Yeah, we can see. We can call it that. But I think it looks nice. I really do think it looks nice. It looks like a plant now. Yeah. Not only like some kind of weed. Can find next to your payment out walking. It's a fun orchid to have. To have something different. But the cool thing I did not uh, know. Because I, I read about the genus in general, not this particular one. It's just like Pephupedalums. There are a few cool growers, a little bit more cooler gro growers, and warm growers. Easy PC, go. Lovely outside container. I think it looks nice. Green, beautiful roots. I'm able to see the roots, to watch them, see what happens. And my um, Kaisis Brechtisms doesn't have any roots at all. All the roots are dead. Papery, dead. Yeah. Not worth to keep, but I think this is a candidate for my mug treatment. So, what's the mug treatment then? It is a mug, a couple of liquor beams to the bottom, the little orchid without roots, the tag, and some water to the bottom, or at least some humidity. I'm going to spray on it every now and then till I see some proper new root growth and then I will decide whether to put this one in coconut husk fiber chips or semi-hydroponics. Since this is just one, or now it's almost two, but canes or pseudobulbs, shall we say. It's a little bit too uh, small to put in a hanging basket as I have my other Kaisis in. I will show her to you. This is my Kaisis Limming Hay from uh, my Swarter Purchase in June 20. Look what happened. In uh, late winter, shall we say March, it dropped almost all of its leaves, which means that its pseudobobs has reached the uh, maturity size. Yeah. This is the uh, pattern on this guy. And at the same time, it produces uh, <coughs> an abundant amount of uh, new pseudobulbs. It's going to grow on during summertime. And this one needs a lot of water. I can assure you that. And it's sitting in coconut husk fiber chips only. This is the one, the Kaiser Slimming Hay, I repotted with you. Yeah, last summer, I think. I don't remember now, but I can link to that video if you would like to see it. And uh, yeah, I was thinking about the same care for. <laughs> this small fellow, but no, no way. This container is going to be too uh, too wide for it. <laughs> so it's going to be another treatment for this one, another setup. All right. Now you saw that guy as well. Yay. This video includes everything. And yes, what is this then? Uh, it's my uh, <coughs> replacement plant, my Bulbophyllum Rothschildianum. I had it for a couple of years ago, perhaps five years ago or four, I don't know. Didn't get enough humidity, but this time it will. This one is going to be potted up in this hanging pot. It depends on which one. Because I also got this Bulbophyllum eratum. It's also a replacement plant. Hmm. Quite large plants. This one has got large holes to the bottom and it's going to be quite dry, I noticed. I tried this pot out before and, well, it was a little bit too airy. This one is much better. 
I would have preferred this one to be more shallow, but you can't win them all, can you? So, I'll just have to use that one with some styrofoam packing peanuts to the bottom. There's no bad stuff in these guys, so it won't dissolve. And what to do now? I will mix up some media, some proper media. Yeah, I guess I guess we have to make do with these guys, but I, I switched to a white one. <laughs> it's better. So let's make two recordings in one go, shall we? I mix the media up for the two guys all together. I will use a little bit of perlite, a little bit. I will use some rock wool to keep the moisture a bit longer. I will use a few pieces of charcoal to disinfect the media a bit. Now I'm standing here. <laughs> ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm getting uh, too hot here. My brain is almost boiling. Right. And sure would need some sphagnum moss. I can use it all up here. Sphagnum moss, I will divide it so it will not be these long strands anymore. Not in the shape of long strands. It's going to be cut because I want the um, sphagnum moss to be a little bit more distributed evenly. So then we cannot have long strands. That's a lousy idea. So, and now last but not least, my coconut husk fiber, former chips. <laughs> yeah, it's what's left of it. It's uh, a lot of dust and small pieces. So, it takes a while for coconut husk fiber chips to be, or shall we say, to become water attentive. So that's why I um, soaked it in advance a bit for this reporting. Yes. And as you all know, perhaps, Bulbophyllums are humidity-loving orchids. They really do love to be sitting in uh, damp media all of the time. And that means about all of the time. No exceptions, I guess. And now I just discovered that this erratum uh, was uh, yeah, <laughs> really two plants. Just fell off, or perhaps it dried out here and I just uh, yeah, yeah. Never mind that. That means that I can cut this rhizome a little bit in order to, to get a somewhat uh, more narrow plant. That's nice. And this one can work as an anchor down there. And let's see, where's the newest part? That's always tricky. The bulbophyllums. Let's see if I can uh, find it. Ah, it's this little weak one and this little weak one. So, well, I'm not really sure. Sorry. This time I'm not really sure. This little one, perhaps. So, let's see. It's so important that you bury the pseudobulbs and all of the roots. It doesn't matter if you bury the pseudobulbs a little bit. The most important part is that the roots are covered. The roots really has to be covered with media. They will dry out in no time for you if you don't. Yeah, I think this is a lovely media. Lovely to work with at least. Now let's see what it can provide for us. It is just as good as it seems to be. Bulbophyllum rotum. It's going to be a hanging plant. This one doesn't lose its grip. This is steady. So the same procedure goes for my Rochellianum. So I'm not going to show you that reporting. Another reporting to the left, Bulbophyllum Rochellianum. To the right, Bulbophyllum rotum. Well, you don't buy a bulbophyllum for its looks, for its foliage, but ah, the flowers. And why I didn't use semi-hydroponics for these guys? Well, it might not be obvious, but 
They like to be parted up, quite shallow. They're widely spreading. The climbing to the side and the rhizome is getting really, really white. And if you use semi-hydroponics at the surface, will become a little bit too dry for it. It needs the humidity around the base of the pseudobulbs. So the roots won't dry out and the pseudobulbs won't shrivel up too severely. So I think this is the best setup for them. Plain sphagnum moss is also fine, of course, but I think this one uh, retains water a bit longer than sphagnum moss does. And this beautiful little uh, Oncidium navium for 16 euro with a spike. That saved my whole uh, impression of it. <laughs> Otherwise, I wouldn't have been so um, satisfied, satisfied with it, I guess. Um, well, I'm not the complaining type, but... Uh, a spike is a lovely thing to have. And to know that this one can really can flower this small. And that's good. It's a space saver. But I think this one can be quite large <laughs> when it's uh, even more mature in a couple of years. This one has got to come off its mount, of course. There's no way that I can keep this one on a mount in this dry environment. <laughs> come summer, I wouldn't even think about it. Well, so let's not think about the summer. But it's not going to be any problem. I put it in water to make the uh, roots a little bit softer, of course, yeah. And it's a little bit of, um, yeah, it's quite a lot of sphag moss to the, uh, to the bottom of this mount, so it's a little bit easier to get it off, I think, than it would have been if the uh, sphag moss would have been placed on top. I lost the root here. But it's, I don't think it's a new root, so it's okay. But it uh, doesn't have so many roots. But I would take the uh, little sphagnum moss away and clean her up. And if I don't misremember it all too badly, this one could be an Oncidium type. That's on the little bit more colder side. Let's hope not. <laughs> Otherwise, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, no. It's going to work out just fine. There's no use in uh, thinking negative thoughts in everything you do. It won't take you anywhere. But this can take you somewhere, at least. Humidity is sometimes a bit more important than <laughs> chilly conditions, I think. There's always exceptions to the rules, of course. Some individual plants can be, yeah, more adapted, perhaps, to warmer conditions and start to perform a bit anyway. Well, I, I have no idea where, where the new growth is going to come out, so, well, it doesn't matter. It's okay. It's going to have enough room here anyway for a while. Get set, go. Oncidium navium is uh, repotted. Semi hydro. Yeah, wick. Spike. <laughs> Outside decorative container, and in you go. And um, now at least it's got a decent chance of surviving. I mean, a better chance of surviving than if it would have stayed mounted on this one. This cork. We got the last orchid to go. And it's a lovely, lovely, lovely one. It's a uh, Bialara, yeah, <laughs> three row cross, no, <laughs> uh, Marfitch, yeah. Lovely flowers on that one. That's not the best part of this orchid, the flowers, is that it's got two lovely new growth coming out, strong ones. And it's got a lot of beautiful roots on top here that are still green, but they will soon dry out in my environment and yeah, this time I won't uh, keep it in the old media, as I did for my uh, Nelly Isla. No, 
I'm going to take it out and I'm going to put it into semi-hydroponics. Since I noticed that semi-hydroponics works really well for these kinds of orchids. Miltonias, odontoglossums, odontonias, yeah, yeah, yeah. You name it. They adapt really well, the roots, I think. Uh, better than can clay orchids. And they're actually really thirsty ones. Uh, it will ease my workload on these type of guys a bit. There's still um, good roots in here, and I hope they will stay that way. The media is really, uh, if not broken down, but uh, it's, um, no, 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 no. I'm going to clean her up and put her in semi-hydro with you. I cleaned Marfitch up, <laughs> the one with a name that sounds like a cat name. Come here, little Marfitch. Yeah. <clears throat> but anyway, lost a few le uh, pfft, it lost a few roots, of course, but that was inevitable. And it's all a question of how well these two new guys are gonna respond to the repotting. I was a little bit scared when I washed the root system that I was gonna get some water between the sheath here and they will all turn yellow, white, brown and rot off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Seen that before. But it won't happen this time. I hang it upside down for a while <laughs> just in case. It's gonna be perfectly fine. The wick is on pla in place here. Kind of, sort of. Anyway, it's not a very huge pot, but I think it's uh, it's large enough for it to start with. I I think to save a little bit of space. This time I won't have any media directly to the bottom, because so I want this guy to go down. It's got a still got a quite expansive root system, even though half of it is gone down the drain. So, um, space left here, space left there. So, well, I cannot stay in this pot for so long, but at least it's a start to adapt it. Then we can use the 15 centimeter or 16 part next time. Now it's really important to tap it. I mean, I wouldn't want the uh, <laughs> media to be this badly distributed, <laughs> will I? <laughs> no, I won't. So, it's going to take some effort this time. I think it's going to be worth it. These guys are really thirsty individuals. And I reported my Miltonia Sunset, the one you already saw in bloom a couple of times. Uh, I cannot see any difference. It's been a couple of weeks now and it looks like it's never been reported. Nothing happened to that girl. Nothing at all. And it was sitting in spag moss before. Now let's see a lot of the roots to the bottom. Well, what to do? They're looking better, but I'm not satisfied. That's the thing with putting a few pieces to the bottom. <sighs> Maybe I should just try to lift it up a bit and see if I can distribute the lecker a bit to the bottom. At least a bit. Yeah, I can. <sighs> Good thing there's always a solution to everything. Just use your brain every now and then. It's gonna be easier. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> I have to go and get some new aquarium sand. This is the last of it. But I like the looks of them. And they're doing their job. Perfectly well, I think, as well. Yeah, easy to work with, cheap. I'm nice to look at and efficient. What else can you ask for? Yeah, you can ask for the wick to be a little bit more up on the side. 
No, it's getting up here. Yay! Little wake, come to mama. You want to know how sweaty I am? No. 30 degrees Celsius. Lots of humidity and reporting some water everywhere. Yeah. <laughs> My hair has got another color. It's darker now. And this orchid is now reported with a wick to the side. Tidy her up. Look at this flimsy leaf where it's been flowering before. Can I just perhaps tie it up towards the um, pseudobob here just to make it look nicer? Like this. At least it's not hanging down there. Or flimsy. Yeah, now it's reported anyway. So let's hope for this one to progress, shall we? And it's got a good chance because of its new lovely growth here. So uh, if you end up liking this video, please hit the thumbs up and uh, share, this, comment and subscribe to my channel. And have a lovely day and thank you all so much for watching this quite extended long reporting session. But thank you for following me all the way to the end. <laughs> have a lovely day guys. Thank you.